The, the president's infrastructure plan is due for public release on Monday. We're told the administration is turning to our next guest for help. Joe Hockey is Australia's ambassador to the United States, and he's with me now. Why are you involved, Mr. Ambassador? Well, uh, thank you, Stuart. I, I, <laughs> Welcome, I, I, by the way. I'm not the fault of all knowledge, so let's just <laughs> put that qualifier in. But, look, we had a lot of experience in delivering new infrastructure in Australia. Today, Sydney has the most number of cranes of any city in the world hmm. and uh, the most number of tunnel digging machines of any city in the world. And it's not an accident. It takes a lot of planning. You need to have a lot of tools in the toolbox. And the President is getting on with it here, and that's um, hey, look, welcome. Th the question here is, who pays? We understand that the pre President Trump wants $200 billion of taxpayer money put in, and the rest comes from some kind of private, uh, private, uh, private money. Is that yeah. how you did it in Australia? It is, and that's because governments run out of money. And you haven't got enough money to be able to build everything that is needed. If the United States, which currently has the biggest infrastructure gap in the world, yep. of any major economy in the world, the US gap is the biggest... If it does not get on with building infrastructure now, it's going to start to cost jobs and it's going to start to cost economic growth. OK, if I'm a construction kind sure. of guy mm. and I put my money into this infrastructure plan, how do I get my money out? I mean, do we have toll roads? How do we do this? Well, it, in some cases, certainly, you need to have user pays, as you do have in your health system, your education system, every part of life. Feeding your family is a user pay. It won't go down so, well in America, you know. Well, and this is kind of surprising because already 80% of tollways in America are owned by governments. Uh, every airport in America is owned by government, virtually every airport. Yet you've got airlines that are owned by the private sector. People pay to get on a plane, yet they don't want to pay to go to the airport. Uh, either way, people pay. Either they pay through higher taxes or they pay through the charges when they use a facility. And the net result is if you want the infrastructure, if you want the water, if you want the electricity, if you want to get rid of the traffic jams, someone has to pay, and ultimately you either pay to the government, who pays, or you pay directly to the provider. How do you do it in Australia? Who paid? Well, it was necessity. It was a combination. Sometimes, for example, governments owned a lot of assets that they weren't properly managing. We leased assets out to the private sector and got the asset, the money from that leasing, back into new infrastructure. It was called asset recycling. And what it means is that a government can, can free up the capital that it's got tied up in certain assets that aren't doing well right. and use that money for new infrastructure. What happened was in Australia, the Washington equivalent, Canberra, we provide an incentive for the local council, the local state to lease out an asset and then redeploy the money from that into new infrastructure. When you provide them with the incentive, it creates a momentum. Mm. And, of course, they're also the people that provide the permits, the environmental permits, the development permits. Did you meet with uh, President Trump? Uh, I have met, I, I've met President Trump. I've, met, uh, I've spoken to... Did you uh, outline the kind of plan that you use we, in Australia? You we, told him about it? Certainly, yeah, we've spoken to everyone about it. What was the reception? It was very interesting, because they know... Uh, just to put it, some clarity around it, Stuart, this is really important. The President's talking about a trillion dollars of infrastructure, maybe one and a half trillion. Yep. If America doesn't build four and a half trillion dollars of infrastructure within seven years, its economy is going to start to go backwards, it's going to start to lose millions of jobs. Mm. So you actually have no choice. You have a gun to your head in this instance. You have to build the infrastructure. The private sector is awash with money a wash with money. Government isn't, as we're seeing playing down in Washington now, utilise that private sector money and deliver the infrastructure which grows the economy. Do you think we can get our broken political system to agree to that, Mr well, Ambassador? We, well, we, 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 <laughs> Here's your chance. Uh, I'm trying to be diplomatic here. <laughs> right? yeah. But look, no political system is easy. Politics is really hard today. Yeah. I had 20 years of it in Australia and around the world. I know it's hard, but if you deliver real outcomes, people will vote for you. Joe Hockey, um, uh, Australia's ambassador to America. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us. Great so, to be like here. It. Thank you. Yeah, if you're not careful, I'll slip into an Australian accent. <laughs> That's OK. <laughs> so I'm on the verge. We're not fussy, you know. So <laughs> we're, we're, we're <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank much you. obliged. Thanks. Thank you.